the one-act satirical opera Lei Chinesi, or The Chinese Women, tell the story of Lysinga and her two friends as they entertain her brother Salongo, who has just returned from Europe. Each woman takes her turn performing a European-style aria, one tragic, one pastoral, one comic. The libretto to become the text of Christoph Willibod Gluck's one-act opera actually underwent a series of revisions under the pen of Pietro Metastasio, the librettist. One element is constant among the different versions, however. The impetus behind the series of theatrical presentations by the three women is a desire to overcome boredom and pass the time. Ironically, the ennui motivating the performances stands in stark contrast to the enchantment of the audience at the premiere in 1754. Karl Ditters von Dittersdorf, an attendant to the event, tells us that even the power of imagination would fall short of the magical spectacle before him. Especially curious about Dittersdorf's account, though, is not the effusive character of his praise, but the absence of any mention of chinoiserie or exoticism in the production. There is reason to believe that Lei Chinesi might have had some overt Chinese influences. Immediately preceding her otherwise quite European aria, Tanya asks if the mismatching of her dress with her aria might pose a problem for her performance. The Quaglio family's production of stage and set design for this and other Chinese-influenced operatic works was stunning, and so this lavish quality would likely also apply to the costumes. Overwhelmingly, though, Lei Chinesi is a stamping of European culture on a Chinese canvas, rather than the importing of Chinese culture into the European court. When the third aria ends, the three women consider which style is best and conclude that they all have their advantages and disadvantages. The significance of this discussion is to hold a mirror up to the European audience and oblige them to ponder their own cultural and societal differences.